Oh, yes. That is the sound of disappointment, heartbreak, and satisfaction all rolled into one. Welcome to the Great Cricketer. Brought to you by Budgie Smuggler, budgiesmuggler.com. Use the code CHAMP at checkout. You guys know the drill for the magic to happen. Brad Haddon's on the show. George Bailey's on the show. And the World Cup, for the first time, is not on the show, but it's here. It's coming. It's coming back to where it belongs. Really, it doesn't belong here at all in any way, in, in, in any capacity. But, you know, it's home and it's safe and I feel good because I saw my team hold up some silverware. There was some fireworks or some shit. It was on a weird time. I didn't really catch it, if I'm honest, but... Oh, doesn't it feel good, Sam Perry? Feels so good. Uh, it's it's been a few years for Australia between yeah. men's trophies. Yeah, but it feels so right. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm tempted to say there are other teams who may have been more deserving, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to say that. Not I what just, I saw. I just watched a couple of horses. Yeah. head out there, yeah. give it a whack, and all of a sudden we've got <laughs> trophy again. All you know, I, I, I feel yep. arrogant and yeah. I feel safe. Yeah, I saw a lot of shit teams get knocked out. Mm. Get knocked out. PNG, India, yep. fucking Packham, yep. Packham Stan. Packham Stan. <laughs> what? You know, a lot of those visceral minutes were right. How the fuck did we win that? <laughs> was it seven out of eight tosses? Did Aaron French, did, and French and Fringe, <laughs> the Fitch Festival. Fringe Festival. You know, was he unlucky to not get player of the tournament by winning all the tosses? You know, how important was that? I don't know. I just saw the yellow... And the hue of the mm. light green, yep. lifting up a trophy, yep. that's success. It that felt right. nice. It feels nice because the women have been flying the flag for years. You're right in saying that. They've been winning everything. Doesn't it feel nice to hear the, the pain of, of people from other countries who, who concede in mm. their pain mm. that we somehow managed to just keep doing oh, it? Because like we, we may have even forgotten a little bit. but just but, lob up. But the DNA is still there. <sighs> It's DNA, baby. And it's just another contribution to the pain. And, you know, yeah. for those out there, and I've seen a few of you try and do it, mm-hmm. a few of you from the UK especially, other countries, actually there's a lot more of a culture of authentic congratulations in, say, Asia, in India, Pakistan, et cetera. We'll sure. accept those congratulations. Yeah. But over in England, a little bit of uh, faux or false magnanimity, you know. <laughs> People out there saying well, congratulations, Australia. Oh, no, right. the, the best way to be magnanimous is to show us your pain. Yeah. That's a painful, painful win. Yep. Especially yeah. against the backdrop hey, that is of, a dagger. A, of a tuned up, sophisticated England white ball they side were tuned up. led by Daddy Morgan. Yeah, they were tuned up. They're just Mate, a they're, best automobile. They're not even in the country anymore. They sent journos over there. Mm. They were, who's they? Just yeah. the papers. Uh, and, <laughs> they. and they were completely entitled to yeah. go over there. Yeah. And that's neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. And there's Australia. There's just demolition job. There's yep. you know Marsh. There's Bison Marsh yep. coming out there. Yep. Bang six off Milne. Yep. Papi Stoinis doing his thing. You know Zampa Miserly. The Bush Horse Hoff one for six, three for sixteen. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You know, that's fine. <laughs> I don't know what I watched all tournament, but mate, I but I liked. Woke it. <laughs> up to a lot of messages this morning, basically from like Aussie mates being like, "Mate, did you watch the cricket last night?" It's like, uh, no, no one's watched it since the last game. Well, people, people, people literally had a look at a final. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the other stuff. Yeah, had a look at it. Oh, yeah, what times are not? I'm like, okay, I might wake up early, I guess. How are you going to watch it? Yeah, yeah. It's not, I don't know. It's a mini. <laughs> I was like, what times a mini out? It was a bit like that. And that, that they, I mean, is that does that make this the greatest World Cup win of well, all? Because in, if you look at it from a, mm. uh, was it like if you get the continuum going of because you know what, like grace is basically success without care. Is this the greatest? Grace is success without care. How little can it look? Well, look at Mark Waugh. You know, I always do. How how little can you care yeah. and succeed? Yep, yep, yep. yep this yep, is yep. what, I mean, yep. a lot of analytics and mm. data and intelligence and brains go into how to win a T20 match. Mm-hmm. I was just looking at bench press. Yep. I, I, that was a bench press win. That I was give it a whack. I saw a lot of blokes just turning up. They were bigger. And, and they look big in the Guernsey. And it just felt like blokes were going out there with a baggy green on. Yeah. Metaphorically. Yeah. Metaphorically. There was a lot of guys wearing Steve Ward jerseys underneath their own jerseys. It felt true blue. Mm. It felt fucking on a trip to, you know, uh, Gallipoli, Anzac oh, yeah. Cove. Yeah. It had all well. that like. <laughs> yeah. In terms of creating a national that sort mythology. Of, that sort of weight of, uh, mm. you know, um, uh, yeah, uh, myth- mythology is the right word. He goes, is it is it one of the all-time beat them in the tunnel victories. Was that a tunnel victory? Well, I said after the semifinals, I was just couldn't be more convinced that 
that New Zealand couldn't get past Australia. And New Zealand, and this is the great thing about winning, you can be so magnanimous in victory. Oh, yeah. You know, New Zealand. What Wonderful a, what, country. What a great country, a great set of fellas. Yep. They are such a good cricket team. Great foreign policy. Oh, what, and one, leadership. One, of, one of my favourites. Yeah. As foreign policy goes. Great, great, great schooner. Kiwis, New Zealand, great schooner. Dry, dry humour. Very dry. Yeah. Uh, there's some stuff underneath I can't and, uh, quite figure uh, out just yet. Yeah, skeleton stuff. Couple well, of don't, don't we all? Yeah. Nice people. <laughs> I like a, one thing I like about this victory mm-hmm. is we're talking about England. Like, that's like how, right. I mean, New Zealand. That's actually, yeah, I don't. I New don't Zealand like, are mm. one win away yeah. from being the ODI tied winners. Yeah. The, the Test Champ. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wink, wink, wink and yeah, a nod. Yeah. Wink and a nod. Mm. Win. Test Championship mm. and uh, and the yeah. T20 stuff. And now it's like, how does this, how does this roll into yeah. the ashes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's very unfair. But I know. think there were certain teams which. I think there was probably maybe not India. So there's definitely two teams that if they had won, it would have meant so much. England's definitely, <laughs> definitely two teams. <laughs> what does that say about cricket? There's two teams that would have cared about winning this. <laughs> no, but in terms of like a nice narrative, a story, because cricket has to mean something. Like we always, we're always asking, what does this mean? And, and inevitably the answer is, or invariably the answer is nothing. Nothing. Indeed. Yeah, none of this means anything. We'll forget this victory in three yeah, days. Unless you score runs personally on a Saturday, none of this means anything. Um but like if England had won the game, that's like 2019 white ball program validation. Great yeah. sort of unify uh, the belts. Great the players, you know, uh, New Zealand as well. Same story, mm. you know, hard working team. Then it sort of would have had more gravitas with the 2019 World Cup final as well. Yeah. India, less of a story, I think, because they've oh Asian century. They're all coming. Yeah, sure, IPL, sure. You know, yeah, I, I can, can't I, stop the IPL oh, juggernaut. I can, oh, I can confect a narrative in, in mm. any in any sense. You can say anything. You can put any arrangement of Australia words together. Australia is literally lob up. We'll give them a whack. We'll see where we find ourselves. And we'll watch it. At, mate, we might, might catch a highlight. And you know what? That's just fucking worked. That's that, that that has to hurt for everyone else. Do you think, uh, like, couching Australia's victory in terms of, like, we're just big, dumb, oafish, penis-out cricketers mm-hmm. that just win when we feel like it, do you think that kind of is insulting to the Australian setup? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if I was if I was a player listening to this, I mean that they won't they won't surface for four and a half days. Yes. Uh, I'm sure that'd be fine. S- such is the circuit in the UAE. Um, but yeah, I would find that insulting. Yeah, because they're, they're really school players, but you know there are just better teams. It, 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 in I my mean, opinion, like un- until this tournament, he goes like th- this was the nerd era of T20 cricket. Like th- this was the the cock show era was over a long time ago, yeah. and people were enjoying letting Australia know that. Like mm-hmm. we we just become dumb baboons. Playing outdated oafish cricket, mm-hmm. you know. Then we won a couple of tosses against South Africa and Pakistan <laughs> <laughs> and whacked a few, and now we're the best white ball team in the world. Aaron Finch <laughs> won seven out of eight tosses. <laughs> I don't, I don't you know. know I don't remember the last game was when someone batted first that wasn't like Namibia or Scotland uh, who won a game. But you know what? That you know, I don't care. We're gonna win the next World Cup too. I know we're gonna go That's back gonna to back. Fun. We're just gonna bump <laughs> them and get the front dog. <laughs> Uh, and we all saw it coming. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. Everyone saw it. Everyone yeah. predicted this. I just, I feel like I'm being representative of how like 98% of the cricket world is being like, how the fuck have they won that? Mm. You know? And that's just the mm. feeling. But like from the, from the perspective of, you know, summer's just starting in Australia, obviously not in Melbourne, it's fucking mm. freezing. Mm. But for the rest of it, it's like, we just, cricket's come back to the consciousness. You know, the bat off is about to begin the Sheffield Shield. Yep. You know, the first Ashes test around the corner, English yeah. players arriving, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So People it's just like, wake oh, up to cricket. yeah, it's just, oh, I recognise that jersey. Oh, we, yeah. we, we, we win? Yeah, I saw Finch left the truck. Yeah, all good. Yeah. I was watching you the know? Today Show last week at like breakfast. Uh, like I, I saw like a 15 second highlight package and now yeah. the highlights package is going yeah. for like 45 seconds yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, some mm. some fireworks are going off. Yeah. And is that, did we win that? Yeah. Is that is that Mitch Marsh? Yeah. Okay. And I know it's summer because the AFL trade season just sort of kicked oh, off. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> That's how I know it's Indeed. summer. Well, you know, uh, Richmond Football Club signed up to COP26, you know, sure, to get to net zero and that kind of thing. Well, I mean, now, no. sorry, go. I was going to say maybe we should actually celebrate the Australian team because, as I said on the you know YouTube and Patreon show this morning, that um you know they've they've got they've beaten South Africa, they beat Sri Lanka, they beat the West Indies, they beat Pakistan, they beat New Zealand. Yep. Have I missed anyone? Not sure. Uh, oh, no, I think that, I was they actually beat no. Um. So you know if you beat those teams in a World Cup, you're most likely going to go pretty close. Okay. In my view. Australia didn't have to play the two best teams in the world, India and England. They didn't have to play them, but that's not that's not that's not anyone's problem. But I'm just saying, like, if you beat if you win those games, you're going to go pretty close. And yeah, okay, they beat a, they beat a red hot Pakistan, 
from a comfort behind victory. They've had they smashed New Zealand. It wasn't a smashing. Yeah. It wasn't a smashing. Well, I thought, well, I thought eight it was. wickets, but seven balls left. It was uh, pretty it was. good performance. But they were never in danger really in the final. Were Man, they? I, I, I mean, we haven't talked at all about the game, uh, but like. New Zealand didn't have enough runs at the halfway point of their first innings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Williamson played one of the all-time great innings to bump them up to 170. And it was like, oh, is there a bit of kinetic energy behind this? Have they sort of come – have they stormed home mm. a little bit? And then, like, a couple of overs into Australia's innings, when fucking mm. Mitch Marsh comes out, picks up Adam Milne yeah. for six. One of the fucking greatest shots it's just in the so circumstance. Alpha. Made so alpha. Yeah. Then a boundary, Noodles won the third, and then, yeah. then pulls him again. He's off 14 off three. Mate, See you later. It was, and like just, him and Warner were just bossing it. They were dicking it. And uh, it was yeah. uh, after eight overs, it was like, oh, this is, they're in complete control here. So I'm, I'm, I'm wary of like people who may not have watched the tournament as we have being a bit like, fucking hell, boys, a little bit harsh. Like, team's done really well. I just won a World Cup. That is true. That is true. However, if I can throw in a little caveat, if they won the game batting first, you know, then it's like fucking no questions. I just think our experience watching this, if you bat second in this tournament, it is an enormous advantage because basically every team won chasing in this in this uh, World Cup. And that's that's also true. So maybe both things can be true. Now, they have played really well. They, they beat a red-hot Pakistan, come from behind, some amazing individual performances in both the semifinal and the final. But <laughs> big advantage, it seemed, batting second. Is that yeah. fair? Is that fair? I'm, I'm sort of tiptoeing, but I'm just trying to be delicate to people who maybe haven't consumed the game, the games as we have. I think T20 is a dumb and funny format, and yeah. uh, made especially so in conditions where you know both innings can have can can be very different. Yeah. Uh, but I think that if you know the boys have probably, as we record, still got their ski goggles on, spraying around whatever sponsor beer <laughs> who brought that they've ski got. goggles by the way to the UAE. Did. Yeah, uh, kind of Aspen after this. Um, then, you know, the time for sort of delicately outlining how there was a fair bit of luck involved is, is later. For now, we just say that we're the best. Okay. Uh, That's and, fair. you know, I, I mean, I think Doss put it best. Doss is, at, I mean, Doss has had the all-time best last sort of 72 oh. hours or so in terms of content, I would yeah, have thought. Yeah, yeah. Like, Jump he's, on he's, that. He's been, um, he has yeah, been red on the pack yeah. there, but... As he, he he Instagrammed the other day, uh, sorry, a couple of hours ago, um, he Instagrammed publicly a message to Justin Langer, whose number I presume he has. That's how I do it. Um, as they say, my brother, winners are grinners. Hopefully the hound dogs will be off your case and provide you with the respect you really deserve. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, some of the, you know, what's the word? Some of the reflections in the next couple of days are going to be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think they're, you know, if you win, you're entitled to it. You can play it however you like. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the qu- you know, was Langer right all along? You know, were those like us? Well, I'll just say me. You know, were we? Were, was Langer, did he have the vision all along? That's going to be the thing that's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. He's won. He's won. He's won the World Cup. You said this this morning on one of the seven shows we've done today that, um, like you can't you can't argue that Australia have played with a level of freedom that we've not seen for a long time in in a white ball setup. The kind of freedom that of guys express themselves we've not seen it in a long time, and that has to be about an environment which is supportive. And you've seen all the stuff like on social media with like Mitch Marsh, Stoinis. There's like a lot of love for each other in that group, and that's that can't be um, that has to be partially at least facilitated by the environment that they're in, which, exactly. is, which is facilitated by the, by the support staff and the, and the, and the coaching staff. So, yeah, was, was Langer right a lot? Like, or, or has he has, – is this one of the great results? Like, has, has Langer demonstrably altered his r- approach following critiques from his players? Mm. Um, step it'd, be, back, it'd be sixth time lucky Step that's back the case. a little bit. <laughs> Let's be And honest. then the, the benefits have ensued. Yeah. And uh, – you know, no, I don't think so. I think the children were wrong all along, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I think That's those who right. criticised Langer were dogs. <laughs> yeah, hounds. People wrote off David Warner. People asked questions about David Warner. The yeah. bulls, the bulls back, Man, baby. He, the he bulls really fucking... back. The bulls properly back. I wondered if he'd be back. He's fucking. He's knocked at the door. He's burst through. He's 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 barking. Yeah. So we spoke to Brad Hunter, which we'll get to in a moment's time, who was obviously in the support staff for uh, – he was in the coaching staff for Sunrisers, Dave Warner's former IPL team. I think there's absolutely no danger he'll be uh, be retained by Hyderabad. But um, he gave an interesting insight. I mean, just, just listen to the answer. But, uh, but yeah, I just did not see this coming. It's like a different player. You know, it's, it's going back to what we've seen for the last decade, essentially, of Dave Warner opening the batting for Australia. You know, it's, uh, it's actually been – as a tournament – 
as a whole, it's actually the number three to five, which has scored the most runs. Not that many openers. Not, okay, the two, okay. Caveat that with the two highest run scorers of the tournament were Bubba Azam and Dave Warner, who opened the batting. Uh-huh. Okay, but I feel like there hasn't been those but like after that. those massive scores. Um, it hasn't been a big power play tournament. Yeah, though now that I say that, like Just Butler was the only guy who scored 100 and he opens the batting. So what the mm. fuck am I talking about? I don't know. I just got, got the – okay, maybe it's like actually the scores as a batting team in general were actually quite low. There was only one score above 200 in the entire World Cup and that was India versus uh, Scotland or Namibia or some shit. One, one of the minnows. Anyway, that's a really uh, good point that I've made very eloquently. Um, but <laughs> but the point is that, uh, you know, Dave Warner's had a fucking sensational tournament and gets player of the tournament. But they actually could have been – it's funny, isn't it? Because in the Australian setup, like Mitch Marsh has probably had like the the breakthrough, but then Zampa had a sensational tournament. Hazelwood I, I, did well. I, I think Zorba should have got player of the tournament uh, mm. because I don't think it can be underestimated how much he held that entire bowling team together as this sole spinner and the pressure mm. that you'd be under being the only spinner in a team mm. playing in the UAE where the you know, um, accepted wisdom ahead of the tournament was that you needed a couple of spinners and India brought a couple of spinners over. Sure, in the IPL, like didn't we? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, for them to, uh, I guess, load him with the entire responsibility of the frontline spin, if that doesn't come off as amper, I feel like the whole bowling innings falls apart. And, uh, you know, th- they already had to use three guys for the chop out overs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who, you know, p- played some pretty good roles. Maxwell, especially with the ball, was great. But, you know, once you get into that Australian bowling attack, if one or two guys stuff up, you can really do some damage. But mm. Zampa just held it all together. Every time he, ca- he came on to bowl, he rested the advantage back to Australia. And I think that kind of bowling permitted the Warners and the Mitch Marshes, because there's multiples of them, mm. to do what they did. And, you know, he, he's perennially underestimated. He always says that, Zampa. But, like, just the consistency was uh, was exceptional. And He didn't I, have a bad game. He didn't. I, Did I he mean, go for more than 30 in any game? Not sure. Yeah. But every time he came on, when he came on, he, yeah. he won. He just won against every single team. Doing that so significant performance yeah. in the semi. I think England might have got hold of, hold of him actually, uh, but yeah, um, that would that would be England's frustration. They fucking demolished us in twelve overs, and yeah. it was uh, oh, you know, okay. As one, I mean, you know, as one journo, and they know who they are. Said to me this morning, you they know, know who they are. This was, <laughs> uh, you know, this whole tournament win was just a perfect tune up for the real stuff. It's a tune up. It was a tune up. Yeah, we're all just we're all just chassis sitting in the garage, <laughs> getting a little tune up, a little tune up. Well, the big dance. I, I read someone else say, like, you know, well, it doesn't matter if uh, Australia lost five series headed in this, in, heading into this tournament. I mean, you know, they didn't have their Ferraris. You don't take the Ferrari out for a spin every every Sunday. You yeah, know yeah I mean? that's you, right. You bring it out every no, so often. Every four years, apparently. Exa- exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and only when it feels like it and yeah. it hasn't got something else on at yeah. the time. <laughs> I remember a guy, a, a guy I lived with in the UK got a new pair of shoes once and he said, he said, I'm not going to wear these out if it's dirty outside. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe it's dirty outside. I used to live with some guys who like really were into their football and they bought like an official Premier League ball, but yeah. then they refused to play with it um, of course. Yeah. Uh, on the street because they didn't want to like scuff it yeah, or like, yeah, yeah, or yeah. they're just like, no, it's, it's only for specific parks and stuff. Like, <laughs> I have a fucking ball. What's it for? It weighs $160. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, yeah, Zampa by well. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I t- yeah, I t- yeah the old bush horse. Yeah, I tell you the one thing I've learned, uh, or just how easily, like, chop outs just come into my lexicon. Like, so that's the most normal thing. We had, a, we had a meeting the other day, and a goat bloke just, like, dropped it in, like, unironically, I think. Mm. He said, I chop, chop out there. Yeah. Sorry, what? Is that just yeah. a thing we're saying now? Well, it's like seeing, and you, like, once you see the car once, you yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I can see it everywhere. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Can't stop seeing it. Yeah. Well, Maxwell, a couple of good chop outs. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I guess the main takeaway is that Australia are the greatest team ever. Uh, so just to um, just to highlight uh, the scheduling of uh, world cricket at the moment, uh, New Zealand play their first T20 game against India in two days' time, <laughs> November 17. And we'll be covering that, won't we? Yeah, we'll be covering yeah, that. We wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> wouldn't no have thought so. Um, yeah. And then the West Indies are already in Sri Lanka. Pakistan are already in Bangladesh. They've run Bangladesh. So basically everyone's already got the fuck out of the UAE and they're playing uh, some other series now. I mean, talk about tune-ups. They've just had a World Cup final. They're going to play in three T20s, a, a test match and some other shit. A couple of ODIs or whatever. Time for some truly memorable cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the yacht? Uh, no. No, I don't. <laughs> what happened in the semi? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Name three things that happened in the Bangladesh game. <laughs> no, thank Can't you. Can't do that. Um, okay. Uh, now, we spoke to George Bailey, yeah. uh, selector of the Australian cricket team. And in many ways, this was his victory, uh, which we put to. But before 
we get to George, we've got to thank uh, – well, this interview is brought to you by T20 Star, Shane Watson's, uh, Shane Watson's company. Mm. Is that fair to say? Shane Watson's – Shane Lee yeah. Watson's company. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Walter had a breakout series himself commentating uh, with the ICC feed over there in Dubai. I'd be extremely surprised if he hasn't picked up this summer. It's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be. Thoughtful, erudite, knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, salad. Oh, <laughs> mate, the salad. And Thoughtful, the erudite, exactly. salad. Yeah. The three big things. Exactly. Yeah. How's his salad? Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, well. If you, want a, if you want a bat that gives you the inner confidence to take the bowler over the top, as Watto did, I've seen some social footage of Watto taking uh, like like Facebook influencers over the top at the Nets. Oh, yeah. Mate, the sound of the ball off the off the bat. Different the sound. T20, mate. Actually, last night there was a point where um, someone was – I can't remember who he was commentating with, but uh, I think Santner was tossing it up or something. And he mm-hmm. and he had mid on and mid off up, mm-hmm. and they were like, "Oh, what are you? You'd you'd be down the deck to this, wouldn't you?" And he's like, "Well, it wasn't much of a charger, but yeah, I'd be loading up." <laughs> I mean, he didn't swear, but yeah. and he got to bring it home as well. What yeah. as well? He got some social clips of that, but he's also got yeah, his, his kit T Twenty Stars. Cricket season starting. Cricket season's begun. Wherever yeah. you are, yeah, you got some kit that's affordable. Um, you know, finally, it doesn't have to. You don't have to go into debt. Uh, you don't have to go into debt. You don't have to start selling NFTs. You don't yeah. have to start looking at some digital clips and mm. saying, how can I package this up so that you can digitally and uh, own it with a certificate of authenticity yep. or some shit? And then someone tells you there's a drop of something else. Yeah. And um, Unless so, you want to. I mean, you can still do that if you I want guess to. you can do all those things if you yeah. need to raise the funds to buy yeah. a cricket kit. or If you need you, it to be your identity. You could just have a little bit of money if, yeah. if you're lucky and uh, you can afford some cricket kit that's going to perform well for you. Yeah. T20stars.com. That's run by Shane Watson. He knows what he's talking about. Here he is, George Bailey. Well, we're lucky enough to be joined by the chief selector of the Australian men's cricket side, fresh from Australia's dominant T20 World Cup win against New Zealand, George Bailey. George, they say success has many fathers and failure is an orphan. Are you one of the fathers of today's victory? No, no I think that... I think the players. Uh, I think the players will uh, rightly receive and, and a deserved. Um, um, you know, I, th- I think they should get all the credit. They've they've they've, uh, they've been extraordinary. Um, it was pretty. You know, the game itself was great to watch, but seeing uh, the how genuine uh, that sort of excitement and happiness um, there was for for one you know each other and and post that victory was pretty special. This is very much Team GB, though, isn't it? It's George Bailey's team now. This is Team. This is, te- this is Team GB. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I was going to ask you, uh, as a former player, you were obviously there last time. Australia won some silverware, which is just a term, which is just a football term, but now it's in mm. cricket. Mm. But like, does 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 look does seeing the celebrations from afar? Does it make you sort of miss the playing days, the camaraderie, the dressing room? Yeah, I, I think there's uh, there's no you've got a, that little window there of I don't know a few hours um, that might be extending a little bit today, um, I think. But of where it's it is, it's it's very special, um, and particularly I think for this group, yeah, it's it's been well well reported. A few of the um, concerns and a few players, um, you know, very publicly challenged around um, you know where where a lot of people thought they were at, um, and I think what you saw in a lot of the um, celebrations was was an outpouring of that, um, but I think what it also showed was so much of that stuff was was purely external and in, internally. I think there was a, a really strong belief right from right from day one. Mm-hmm. Bales, like th- there's a um, speaking of external views, like there's a common perception that like a lot of other international teams have really sophisticated analytics and structures and you know they can write books about t20 cricket and australia's just a bunch of big talented units with levers you know who take the ferrari out of the you know the the garage every uh every year or two and that's why why we get our success you know like Mm. is there any truth to that or is, is there a lot of analytics and uh and and strategy and planning that goes behind australia's tournament victory Oh, we like to think so, but I don't know if it's a sophist. I don't. I mean, I don't know what other teams do, but um, yeah, no doubt. There's there's lots of lot. There's so much data, isn't there? So how you how you want to use it is is really important. Um, I, I was I had I was really confident of the of the the talent in the group. Um, I think st- looking back a month ago. Um, and by no means was it an ideal lead up. My my only real concern was how quickly we could build um, a bit of a sense of a sense of team. Um, that's that's probably that 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 group individually 
very, very talented, but just how they actually um, fit and moulded the roles together, the individual roles into what that would look like as a team was going to be really crucial. Uh, and I think Finchie's, Finchie's done that particularly well. Uh, I think the coaching staff did that particularly well around allocation of roles and just clarity for players, clarity for players who weren't even in the squad uh, or in the 11 as well. So, um, And I, I think that was the bit that, that was the, the key piece of the puzzle that was going to make the difference. Um, but let's be honest, I think the other thing you need in T20 is a little bit of luck too. And, um, and then you know, how, you, how you try and justify that after the fact is, is up to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought Australia were favourites. And, um, <laughs> can I just thing. just stick with that? Uh, heading into the tournament, uh, we, we, we were struggling. You know, lost five series in a row or something. There was some a lot of public pressure on Justin Langer. Uh, a lot of you know, it seemed to filter through that there were calls for the need to change uh, from his side of things in terms of how he operated. And you, as you've rightly called out, they seem to have been able to develop a sense of team uh, and you, you mentioned Finch and the coaching staff like do, do you know how they did that like what changed or, or are you not close enough um well I, I mean even just the looking back at the, at the five series that you've lost that that I mean that's just a that's a bit of a useless stat there isn't it because it was um a different conditions than than where a lot of those series were and it's a and um vastly different personnel um so you know, I don't, and and both both you know, hearing Finchie and um, and Kane Williamson get asked about that pre-game about New Zealand's record against Australia in different formats in finals, and um, you know, I, I just think all that stuff, and football teams get asked all the time, doesn't don't they? Like, who who won the last? Have a new contest. It's a new, so all that stuff. Um, yeah, people look for something there, but I don't think it's necessarily there. Um, I think that I think what the boys have done, I, I think it almost played into our hands a little bit in that um, in that Davy Warner and Smudger um, their IPL. I think they both came in as senior players with a hell of a lot to prove. Um, you know, one of the one of the success stories, and um, probably another one unlucky not to be named player of the tournament uh, along with Zamps, Joshy Hazelwood, mm. just getting an extended run at T20 so that he, he's come through that IPL um, and, um, and really, you know, his name up in lights, which made it really hard on on Kane Richardson um, and, and you know, in, in many respects, a little bit Ashton Agar as well. So you've got that sort of quality on the bench. So I think that drives the guys that are, that are on the field. Um, they know that when you've got to make decisions like leaving two of those, those two guys out who I think... We could have slotted into the team at, at various stages, and I think the result um, could very well have ended up the same. But those guys that are on the field have a sense of responsibility that they've they've been given the opportunity and they've got to um, they've got to respond. So um, I think that's been I think that's been really crucial, and um, and I think the boys have just had a, a hell of a lot of fun. I know they've spent a lot of time um, as a group uh, off the field together, and um, that, that's built up as well. Mm. We're going to need a great advert at the moment for the Hobart Test match because it looks like it's absolutely <laughs> pissing down behind you, Bales. We play through this, I reckon. <laughs> I was, I was really, right. I was really enjoying right. the, I was really enjoying the views across the bay before, and then it's just all of a sudden it's just, just gone. So, yeah, now the leggy might struggle to hold it for a couple of hours, but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought you might have had a window cleaner. There's a hose just yeah. absolutely on that on those windows. So I'm going to ask you. Um, that, well, I think the most like satisfied person at the moment in Australian cricket might be Aaron Finch, who, in my eyes anyway, is one of Australia's best ever white ball players, and he probably hasn't had the same opportunities as what other captains might have had in terms of. I guess the last T20 World Cup was like 1997 or something, and like the, and like the last uh, yeah he had the 2019 World Cup. But I mean, he's a guy who's who's led Australia for the last few years, but he hasn't quite had the opportunity to win a big tournament. And I know he hasn't had personally his, you know, his highest ever, you know, run aggregate series or whatever, but he must be so satisfied right now to win a, to win a, a you know, a tournament for Australia. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. He's, um, he's, he's worked very, very hard and, um, yeah, there's, there's, as, as far as captaincy goes, I don't think there's any, uh, there's, there's no more difficult format than T20 because each decision has such huge ramifications and the planning that you do um, pre-game, I, I guess a lot of that is is under the assumption that you'll get the game on your terms. Mm. Um, and we know 
that you know once once the game kicks off, there's so many opportunities, there's so many times where that that's not the case, and so he's he's constantly having to think on his feet. Um, clearly going in with the with the four out and out bowlers and and using our our all rounders um, um, who are I, I think you know under underutilized. I think they're all vastly. Um, Good bowlers and, and the fact that we hardly used or didn't use Stoin at all, I think, for the tournament, yeah. um, you know, speaks volumes. But the way he managed those and um, was constantly shifting and trying to work out the best best times to use his quicks. Um, you know, obviously having Zamps bowl as well as he did Hoff, Hoff fantastic. I, you know, I just think that the balance of that bowling group was was outstanding. So uh, I think Finchie's done an amazing job, and um, yeah, I, I certainly hope he is feeling very very satisfied. Mm. Bales, I have to ask you about the bison, uh, Mitch Marsh. Uh, he, he has the hot hand. He's a guy that was identified extremely early in Australian cricket as somebody who could take, uh, you know, take us forward across all three formats. Such a talented player, and I think everybody is so pleased to see how see him actualize. You know, on the biggest stage and and lead us to victory in the biggest game in T Twenty cricket. You know, d- what kind of um, Weight do you put on a performance like that vis-a-vis the Ashes uh, and Red Bull cricket? He's got uh, he's got runs at that level as well against England. Um, you know, will do his performances in this tournament mean much for when you guys sit down and talk about what we're going to do for the Ashes? Well, I think firstly, he's probably the great example of um, he, he probably epitomises, I reckon, what the what the group were looking to to sort of achieve um, as a collective. I think he's he's one who um, he you know wants to wants to express himself on the field um, and then and then relax and enjoy himself off the field and um, and sort of remove remove the burden of expectation um, and. I thought the start of his innings absolutely summed up, mm. summed that up. I mean, that was uh, that was pretty incredible, and um, you obviously don't get the appreciation. But um, but Adam Milne is, is quick, and mm. for Mitch to do that was uh, a huge. I, I just think must have given the boys on the sideline so much confidence of of what was to come. Um, I you know. I don't know how much it'll actually have an effect on the Ashes. What what it's great, we, what I know about Mitch Marsh over a long period of time is that when he's when he's in when he's feeling confident, when he's playing really well, um, that's that's a, re- a really important time as to to make hay while the sun shines with him and um, and capitalize on that. So I think he's in a great place. I think he's going to have a huge huge um, couple of years ahead of him, and um, and you know fingers crossed that's that's across a number of formats because he's um, yeah he's He's someone that, um, yeah, as we know, there, you you won't find a, a player in Australia who does not love crossing the crossing the line and, and playing cricket with him, touring with him, having him around the group. So, um, yeah, I, I just yeah, everyone's so thrilled for him. Mm. So obviously, a guy who's been down in Tassie for a number of years, Matty Wade. Um, when you're sort of picking the squad, I, I know you're not picking the starting eleven bales, but but you know when you're picking a your squad, it, it felt a bit like with Wade, who hasn't got a great record down at seven. He sort of all his runs have been in the top three in the big bash and for Australia previously. It felt a bit like square peg round holesy, but he must have exceeded all expectations for what he's done down at seven. I mean, he's essentially he was in the huge partnership against South Africa, which essentially gets us through the finals, and then just about single handedly wins the game against Pakistan. I mean. I'm not sure if you would see that coming. You might believe in him, but I mean, he must have exceeded all expectations from a selection point of view to do that at seven when he hasn't done it before. Yeah, I think he has done it before. Um, that was one bit of data we saw at some stage. Can't okay. remember where it went, but <laughs> uh, no, he, he's game. actually got a he's got an extraordinary record against pace at the at the back end. Okay. Um, and I reckon um, someone will go and look that up, which would be good, but. He, you know, if you if you can get him in, it's pe- people talk about the number that that people bat in T Twenty, and it's yeah. almost it's almost completely wrong. It's about the time the time that people bat, and um, in an ideal world, Matty Wade at seven, you want him exposing sort of seventeen, eighteen onwards, mm. when traditionally you get a lot of the fast bowling and. Um, that Pakistan game was, I think, the perfect example of that, um, and that doesn't take away anything from you know some extraordinary. Um, but the skill set that you sort of need there, you, you want players who can who can hit fast bowling, and um, and the other the other shot that he has, it's bloody handy. There is a lap, yeah. and we know he can play that, and he's been able to play that for a long time. So, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I love all that. I love all that stuff. It's like 
it's like we seem to be the only team that that cops stick for playing players in a position that they don't play in the big bash. But I see, I see England um, do it a lot. You know, Bearstow moves around the order. I've seen Stokes open. I've seen Livingston bat in all sorts of positions. And rather than um, rather than, well, I know the players don't complain about it, but rather than hear you know all the reasons why it can't happen, they they're just adaptable and they make the most of any situation. Um, mm. Uh, Daryl Mitchell's uh, semi-final. Here's a bloke who's never opened, besides a couple of games I think for Middlesex earlier. Um, you know, and uh, and that t- proves to be a masterstroke. It's it's a format where um, you know the the role the role is so important. Whether and and the skill set is so important, and um, and I don't think it necessarily is like Test cricket where you know he's an opener and he doesn't bat at six or you know I think that that's that's just how it works. Yeah. So anyway, what's the team for the Ashes? No, um, <laughs> um, so uh, you know, pe- people have noted the other day, George, that uh, you made a comment about Marcus Harris being, um, you know, close to the opener spot or locked in. I probably should have the quote here. Someone to look that up. Opening the bowling uh, as well. That was, that was most surprising. Uh, just, um, I thought I put a few more probably's and hopefully's and things in there than that was reported, but yeah. Anyway. That's- People ran with that, didn't they? Yeah. Did they? Okay, well, yeah. that was kind of the basis of the question. Yeah. But if you know, if you're sort of caveating it, then uh, the question actually becomes dissolved. So oh, I wanted to know whether, like, th- those comments were. Um, I actually quite like them because because I think someone was talking on commentary tonight or this morning, whatever it was, about how players can play well when they feel security within a side. They feel secure Ooh. in there, whether it's you know via selectors or they know that they're okay. I, I, I wondered whether. That might have been the approach with with Marcus Harris and just saying, look, there's going to be a lot of conjecture about who's opening the batting. You've been the best domestic domestic player. You um, you're going to get the the gig for the first couple of tests. But it sounds like you're not really doing that at all. <laughs> I, it's, it always staggers me that, that what what role outside of cricket, any role in the world uh, that the people working would they not like to feel like that they're backed in and supported and that uh, the their, their teammates or their bosses think that they can do the job. So um, I, I don't think I don't think uh, athletes or cricketers are, are any different on that front. Mm. Wow, Marcus Harris, the captain. That's interesting. Wow, okay, yeah, 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 right. That's, that's wow, that's, that's have you good. seen him? Have you seen him keep? <laughs> good gloves. Good gloves. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks for enduring that, George Bailey. And you know, look, uh, you're, you're too humble to say it, but uh, there are a lot of people. You know, success does have many fathers, but you have come in and very quietly assembled, helped assemble a side that was playing freely. And I think uh, a, a lot of credit goes to you for this victory. And obviously, you guys have a lot of analytics and sophistication happening behind the scenes. But uh, it just happens to be that other teams get all the plaudits for that. So, congratulations uh, on on the tournament win. Obviously, we'll steam through to the Ashes, and we'll get you on ahead of time just to tell us the eleven. <laughs> I, I appreciate we uh, getting through that and not uh, and not talking about the toss, winning the toss. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much to Bales. GB. GB. Uh, now Pez. He's, got, he's got a beautiful, oh, for those watching on YouTube, just the, uh, the symmetry of his smile. Uh, he's looking, in, he's looking in Nick. He's in good, yeah, he's in good Nick. He's in good Nick. Yeah, I thought he was pushing that chest out a little bit, just with the, with the Cricket Australia kit on as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, now, speaking of good Nick, we're about to speak to Brad Haddon. Uh, yeah, more Nick. But uh, but before then, we're going to speak to, uh, sorry, we're going to speak to, we're going to mm. thank our dear sponsors, Budgie Smuggler. Yep. BudgieSmuggler.com. Use the code CHAMP at checkout. Uh, what are we talking about today, Sam Perry? Uh, well, free custom design, so a couple of ideas for, nice. your, de- for your design, uh, he goes. So, I mean, I- I'm calling this uh, – and the Aussies are disputing this. I'm calling it unlikely victory, uh, th- this tournament. Who's Am disputing I okay to say that? that? The Australians. The Australian players? Yeah. It's an unlikely victory. Well, they're saying – well, they, 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 a lot of them have said, look, a year ago we were ranked number one in T20s and we went into the last T20 right. World Cup as a world – you know, number one ranked side. I can see that. And the Ferraris hadn't got together. Because now Ferraris get together That's to do right. things. Yes. The wild, the wild horses yeah. from the man from Snowy Stadions. River. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they hadn't got together. Okay, I can and, see. Uh, I can see that. So, I mean, so they're like, well, actually, we're a little bit better than. But you know, also, we, were, we were written off. What professional athlete says like, yeah, actually, we are pretty, pretty ordinary. Exactly. Yeah, we're actually, we're actually not yeah. a great outfit. Cannot believe we've won this. And I'm going to say it publicly as well. <laughs> so I'm thinking about unlikely victories, unlikely military victories, like the Battle of Gravia Inn. Yeah, gravy yeah, yeah. I was actually going to say that one. It was yeah. fought between the Greek revolutionaries and the Ottoman Empire during the Greek War of Independence. Mm. And, uh, yeah, a group of uh, 120 men repulsed an Ottoman army numbering 8,000 men. Mm. Right? And uh, Yeah, that's right. That was like the crowd of Australia v. Pakistan. In terms of the... <laughs> oh, I know. 
<laughs> in terms of empires having legacies, like an Ottoman is not a great legacy to, you know, fall back on. It's like, what are they remembered for? It's a lovely couch. <laughs> couch accessory. The Ottoman Empire. I wish I could. I mean, the Ottoman Empire really rolls off the tongue, doesn't, doesn't it? it? The Ottoman Empire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a battle of uh, uh, Longwala as well, which saw four thousand Pakistani soldiers and forty tanks. Nope, I'm just reading this off Wikipedia, <laughs> and that's 150 yeah. Indian yeah, troops. Yeah, yeah. yeah throw me that hospital with a pass, detachment yeah. of ten camels <laughs> and one jeep. What a jeep! The, in- <laughs> <laughs> the Indian troops used subterfuge, stringing barbed wire and putting up minefield markers. Yeah, okay, a couple of other ones as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah anyway, just a couple of odd. Ide- you want to put them on your budgie smugglers? Yeah. <laughs> it goes into Fucking India. <laughs> well, it's just, just a historical fact. Yeah. Uh, I guess history is written by the winners. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, Rourke's Drift, he goes. Uh, one of the most famous unlikely victories saw just over 150 British and colonial troops successfully defend a farmhouse against an intense assault by 3,000 to 4,000 Zulu warriors in 1879. Ah, oh, I'm sure they had some weapons or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at that point. They're all things you can put on your budgie smugglers. A couple of units. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all your weapon, this bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this fucking weapon? All ideas. All ideas. They're just ideas. Just thought customer, starters. You you know, exactly. You know, they say there's nothing wrong in brainstorming. I reckon there's plenty you could say Heaps, wrong. I reckon yeah, there's plenty bit, you could yeah. say wrong in brainstorming. Yeah. And Each I have that problem. I, I may have done it. Yep. In, indeed. <laughs> yeah. uh, so take that, uh, yep. take that to the ideas bank. Yep. And uh, get your custom designs going at budgiesmuggler.com. Here's Brad Haddon. Well, when we thought about who we wanted to talk to uh, following Australia's World Cup win against New Zealand, there was only one man that came into our head. And we, we thought, well, this, this is the guy that understands what it means to beat New Zealand in a World Cup final. Uh, and it's our great pleasure to welcome Brad Haddon to the great cricketer. Hads, welcome back. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And i tell you what, I feel privileged to, to be on today. What what a success that was overnight. Um, we had the only piece of silverware we didn't have in our cupboard, mate, and the boys would be enjoying that now, as all Australians are. Um, oh, no, we were just saying earlier on another show, it's uh, it's bedlam here in South Yarra, soy lattes everywhere. And, um, <laughs> had, you know, you've, you've been there before. You've won a World Cup against New Zealand, uh, and we are just sort of discussing this off air. You know, what would Mitch Marsh be doing right now uh, in Dubai? You know what? We, we talk a lot about the game, the first ball six by Mitch Marsh, how he dominated with power through the middle, David Warner's classy tournament. But I reckon the fun will start now with, with Mitch Marsh. I've got a group of mates, um, mate, they're cricket lovers, um, but they're Mitch Marsh fans. And not just because of what he does on the cricket field or what he didn't do on the cricket field in the past, but after they watched a the documentary and they just said, I would like to have a beer with Mitch Marsh. Yeah. So for those guys out there now who probably have left work already at the Woolwich Pier Hotel, just enjoying Mitch Marsh's um, success themselves. I, I just think it had like uh, he, they won the game. Uh, he was in, and I, I, saw, I thought I saw a glint in the eye yeah. of Mitch Marsh. There was th- something took over him there. Will saying he sort of sounded like the Nutrigrain man. He looked like he was there just yelling out there. But I just got a feeling it's <laughs> he, he, is it likely that he, he will be best on ground? I, I think that they're only fighting for points two and one. I reckon he'll get three points um, no matter what. But what, what a tournament it's been, though. Um, all, all the pressure with this team leading in, all the um, chat about Justin Langer and his relationship with the players, it, it was interesting because, to me, it, it, that played out a lot in the media um, before they had the chance to look each other in the eye and, and, and talk what they needed to talk about. And, and the way this team's played tournament play has been outstanding. They've peaked at the right time. So, mate, there'll be a couple of best on ground at the moment. Mm. I reckon Warner, March, all the cheeky ones. Maxwell would, would be there doing things only at one pace, 100 miles an hour. Josh Hazel would be sitting in the corner slowly <laughs> sipping his um, um, schooners of new. Mm. Um, but uh, they'll be having a good time. I remember in 2015, you guys actually broke the World Cup trophy itself. So if they go anywhere close to that, then it'll be it'll be a good time. I want to ask you, uh, I want to ask you, Hads, about not about like, that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you, uh, in terms of like matchups. Now we know New Zealand is such a great team and have been for the better part of like the last decade, really. But there's something about the big brother nurse, the Australia New Zealand relationship, the dynamic. Like when you guys matched them up in 2015, like New Zealand won in New Zealand in the group stage, right? But then. Australia got over the line in the final. It just felt like when you saw that New Zealand had made it, then Australia made it. it just felt like, nah, we'll we'll just we'll just beat them. You know what I mean? Like it just it, it, is yeah, that, I, is that a do you feel that? 
Yeah, it's interesting. But um, I know they beat us in the round stages of the 2015 World Cups, but previous to that, we'd had a really good record against New Zealand in World Cup matches and in big semi-finals. Um, mm. and, and that does, um, as much as people say it does play um, on your mind, you just look at South Africa in World Cup events. They've led into a lot of tournaments ranked number one in the world, but just not being able to get over in finals. So to me, I, I, I was excited about this game. Um, New Zealand matched up against us really well. Um, so it was a really interesting uh, matchup leading in. But, yeah, it's just that little confidence you get n- knowing in the back of your mind that, that you can beat this team on the big stage. Mm. Hads, uh, I know you've been involved intimately in the Australian cricket team and in uh, Justin Langer's regime as well. That You know, that the side seemed to play with a sense of freedom following some uh, conversations between them. You said they eyeballed each other and stuff like that. I mean, have you observed any change in the side that, uh, you know, may be the result of a, a change in coaching approach to JL? And does that therefore mean that, you know, everyone was doing their job and if it means that Australia is playing better cricket, then let's all move forward together? Yeah, I think a really interesting moment in this tournament um, and we've seen some some really good coaching was the Bangladesh game. I think before that we had to we had to get the run rate up. We had to play attacking cricket. It just looked like the shackles had, had been taken off um, and this team said, okay, we've only got to play one way to, to go through the tournament and, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, a lot of energy came off the back there of Davey Warner. I think um, as it, the tournament went on, he started to play some outstanding cricket. But even looking at Jay on the sideline, he looked like he was enjoying the matches. Um, from from a, even the start of the tournament right to, to the back end, he, he was sitting there, a smile on his face. And and, and the guys played like that. They, they played a freestyle um, sort of game, which, which was attractive to watch. Uh, Mitch Marsh, to hit that first ball, the six mm. in, in a final like he did, just shows they're in the right mindset to, to win those matches. Mm. You obviously saw you obviously spent some time in the UAE just recently, and you and you with the Sunrisers set up, and we saw what happened with Dave Warner being dropped. I'm not sure if that was like an ownership thing or a tactics thing or whatever that was, but we, we were sort of watching the IPL, and we, we just just how looking how Davey was batting. It just it looks like it might have been heading towards the end, and he comes out and he's got second leading run score in the tournament. He gets man of the tournament. I mean, like what what happened between the backstage of the IPL in the UAE to this Dave Warner? They're two different players. Yeah, I tell you what, it wasn't a cricket decision he wasn't playing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I think the one thing you, you got to realise with um, Davey, he, he wasn't out of form. He, he was just out of out of match practice. They, they had a long break through COVID. He didn't go to the West Indies or Bangladesh. Um, but he turned up in um, in, in really good headspace. He, he was hitting the ball well. Um, circumstances out of all of our controls, or even the coaching staff, mm. were, some reason he didn't play. So. But it wasn't because he was out of form. So all he needed was some some match time. He's hitting the ball well. Um, he just needed to spend some time out in the middle to to get the rhythm of the game again. And as the tournament went on, you've you seen his class. Um, his class shone through. He got a bit of rhythm back into his game because he hadn't been playing um, for a while. And, and it was good to watch. He, he looked like he fed a lot off um, batting with Mitch Marsh as well. Mm. I, I think they enjoyed um, each other out at the other end. So, yeah, he, he was he's been playing well for for some time. He just needed to get some rhythm in playing some matches. Mm. Hads, uh, you know, if you rewind a week ago, 10 days ago, uh, we were all the consumers of the uh, UK cricket press saying that, uh, well, you know, England's juggernaut <laughs> and momentum will continue on to the ashes. Yeah, uh, you yeah. know, they'll get this white ball title, mm. great white ball set up, and uh, maybe that will mean something heading over to Australia. Uh, does it? Does the reverse now apply? And on that front, you just mentioned Mitch Marsh, uh, you know, is he in calculations now because he's got the hot hand or we just need to cool our jets on that? I, I think his name will come up in the conversation. I, I, I don't know if you remember back to 2014 Ashes here where we won 5-0. George Bale yeah. had an amazing 12 months in the white ball, so he hadn't had the opportunity to play much four-day cricket. And The selectors went with their gut and, and picked George then at, at number six. Um, he played a big role for us through through that series. And, and maybe it, it might go on a gut feel with, with Mitch Marsh as well. Um, there's a number six spot. Uh, up for grads. I, I imagine his name will come up just because the the style of the game he's playing at the moment. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. If Australia, if England had a one, I'd have said, um, no, momentum, no, nah, it's different form of the game. <laughs> now that Australia have won, I said, oh, yeah, take all the momentum out of that and into this test match. So, they, But they can. They're, they're, they'll take confidence out of this. Um, but it's going to be a massive summer, mate. The theatre behind an Ashes campaign, as you know, is different to anything else. Um, ben Stokes adds a, a, another... Um, 
another element, I think. He, not only just his batting and bowling, but the presence he gives. I think he's a real good 2IC to, to Joe Root. Um, and as you know, the captain's under a lot of pressure um, in the England team when they come to Australia. So I, I think Ben Stokes is huge in. Mm. Just uh, let's let's put ourselves in the wicket keepers brotherhood in the union. I, I, that's that's a way of such a good bond hats because you know we both kept so admirably for Australia. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, Matthew Wade may he may well have played his last game for Australia, which is crazy given what he just did in the last game. Literally got Australia over the line with that amazing, especially last three balls. But forty one of seventeen, incredible. But he's probably unlikely to get another go in the in the test setup. The next T Twenty World Cups less than a year away, which is crazy. But um, I know like in your career, you sort of got better as you got older, and that weight has almost accelerated in his career as well in the sort of similar stage. But as a, as a former wicketkeeper of Australia yourself, you must be so happy for, for Matt Wade because he's been such a great player. Well, I think you just have to look at a couple of things with, with Matty Wade. The, the first game, he got us over the line against South Africa. Um, he came out under pressure um, in that tight first game. And playing in tournament play like World Cup, the first game's always the important one because you you need to get that momentum. It takes a lot of anxiety out with the scoreboard or the points table, sorry, if you win that first game. Then then we're, we're all gone against Pakistan. Um, yeah. and, and the way he came out and delivered under pressure was exactly what you want your wicket keeper to do. You don't often get a hit much during 2020 tournaments, but he had two hits and he made the difference in the game. And the one thing he did do also... He, at times, he's come under a lot of criticism for his keeping. Um, I, I thought he was tight. He had that one chance he put down off Zampa, off mm-hmm. the hat-trick ball, which they'll, they'll sort out now over a couple of beers, I'd imagine. <laughs> but I, I thought his keeping was was really tidy. Um, he did exactly what you wanted the keeper to do. He gave a little bit of shit when he needed to. Yeah. He um, got tough runs. So, yeah, he. Oh, I think he'll be there for the um, 2020 World Cup here at home. Okay. Mm. Mm. Hads, uh, I was going to ask you another question. I'll do that next. But just just – can we stick on Matthew Wade for a second? Like, it occurs to me that we, Australia, have always been good up the top, you know, with the hard ball in the power play, and even Wade is a top order bat. And, you know, as T20 has evolved, yeah. I, I f- look, I sense that a lot of the analysts within T20, and you'd be around a lot of them as sunrises, etc., will start to demonstrate or explain how different a finishing role or a middle overs role is to a top order role. What, what does it say about Matt Wade that he's been dropped into that role at number seven and has basically won crucial games for Australia that have enabled them to win the tournament? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. It's a huge role now too in um, the, the short form. There's you got your top order, you got your mid- middle, and you got your finishers. But th- these finishers have to practice a, a different skill set. And mm. I'll tell you that the Indians he played against Pakistan, he, he had a freedy bowl in 147. Um, that fine leg up, he 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 thought, okay, he's going to go full, so he's he's ramped it and and it's gone for six. Next ball, they move fine leg back, and you think, okay, he's over correct. He's gone too full. He hit back of a length and he's opened his foot up and um, hit it six over square leg. It, all that comes down to a lot of analytics he would have done. He's a, he's a student of the game. Um, he's a tough competitor, but. He, he would have watched the field and he would have taken the 50-50 gamble where that ball's going to go. But to execute it under pressure, mate, that, that's what I'm liking a, a mm. about him. It's a tough role to play. Um, and, and they're putting him in there because he's got good cricket smarts. Mm. Uh, Hads, last one, and we'll let you go. I know uh, you'll be a man in demand today, but uh, I noticed on Instagram, and you're not expecting this question, but uh, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say you look amazing. Uh, you're looking great, Nick, and, and yeah. I know that you're actually undergoing a November shred at the moment. And yeah, I nice. just wondered if you could work, like talk us through it because I need one. Mate, yeah. I, well, I, I'm not going to talk about the shred today because Australia have just won the World Cup, so <laughs> that's we're actually going to go it's a cheap out day. the window. <laughs> Down to the Woolwich Pier, probably have some wings and um, 35 schooners with my mates uh, <laughs> and just enjoy Mitch's master's success. So, mate, all that goes out the window. That, that's why the shred happens, doesn't it? For these yeah. these events, they just go, you know what, everything's out the window. I'm going to enjoy Australia's win. And is it a day where you go down to Woolwich Pier with the with the ODI jersey, had another bag, yeah. baggy green? Like, what's the setup you're going for? Yeah. Uh, the setup, no, I'll, I'll just be casual. Pro- okay. I'll probably have the Akuba on um, so I don't get <laughs> yeah. burnt fair skin and yeah. sitting on the balcony just. Oh. Looking over the water, yep. just reminiscing. And, and I, I know my mates will be sitting there probably now um, just saying, <laughs> I knew Mitchell Marsh, we stuck on him long enough, you come good in a big stage. And, yeah. and you know what? We're going to enjoy it today. Yeah. Brad Haddon, I'll let you go to the Woolwich Pier. Thanks for enjoying. Uh, and thanks, Sorry, boy. enjoy that and thanks for coming on. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Thank you. 
And thank you to Hads, a dear friend. Second time the show? Second time. He was on one of the very, very early, early yeah, yeah. episodes of yeah, TGC. Maybe like, in, like in, single digits. In person. That's right. In person. That's right. I asked him for gloves then. Oh, I should have done yeah. it again. Damn it. Um, the Ashes is a thing that is next on the calendar for us. Uh and uh, well, we 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 asked George Bailey just then about uh, his comments, and it, which sort of inferred that Marcus Harris was going to be in, mm. uh, and he he just uh, well, yeah. he seemed to, he seemed to sort of well, uh, yeah, he all but confirmed it on a radio show, and I think he was trying to uh, you know add in a few more caveats and probabilities and and you know no um you know nothing that's kind of mandatory there, but it sounds like Harris is in, uh, yeah, I mean. I, I like I said on the show. Like, I, I don't I don't mind it. I don't mind him just saying it and and, and quelling all speculation on that and saying, "Harry, the, sh- the first shot's yours." There's Go no for problem it. with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if that's what they think's going to happen. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And then now he goes. It's about the ones v twos game. They're playing. They're doing ones v twos. Right. Okay. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of bowlers which look pretty good, and it's and it's interesting. It's interesting in this uh, in this context that Pattinson is not going to be. Well, he's he's removed himself from chance yeah. of selection, which is yeah. interesting because they've announced they've sort of committed to the idea of rotating the quicks, which makes sense entirely. Um, and they would have thought he would have been next cab, as he always has been for the last like five six years when he's been fit anyway. But now it's like Boland's is a bit of a bolter. Scott Boland, then there's Jai Richardson, there's Mark Steckity. Mm. There's a bunch of guys who are taking like bulk wickets in the shield, uh, sort of replacing the well I, first names in the team sheet. Lions first name of team sheet probably as the bowlers, and then it's going to be Hazelwood, Cummins, Stark is probably the the first one to cycle out. But I think Stark would be if he's on in pen for the first test, he's in two B pencil. And it's funny how we talk about rotating. Like we saw the India series last summer, and mm. it was clear in hindsight that yeah. they should have rotated. Hindsight's I, I, the right uh, the, the the operative word. I, yeah. I empathise with Langer's comments that you weren't going to keep those quicks out of that final game at the Gabba because yeah. they are a unit. Yeah, um, oh, if, powers if you, combined. If it was you fucking Captain Planet shit, actually. But <laughs> if you if you dropped Stark that last game, it would have been like, wow, that's a big call. That, that's yeah. right. Except that theoretically, you can see now how tight that you know they actually all were. And Stark was going through stuff with his dad at the time as well. Th- exactly right. But I still I still feel like when. It comes to the game and the, you know, the, the horses are in the stables. Yeah, nice. You know, now, oh, I mean, they're I mean, coming yeah. to the gate. Yeah. It, it, they'll find it hard to tell one of those quicks they ain't playing. Yeah. The Ashes. Yeah. Even Stark, who it would be the guy you'd cycle out, only because Cummins and Hazelwood, you just cannot um, preclude them from playing at this point yeah. in time. Stark's the one whose form seems um, the most open to imbalance. Yes. Uh, and if that's the case, I mean, for me, like I – we weren't sure if Jai Richardson will be available, but he's t- gone and taken a boatload of wickets and looked a class above. Mm. And I think they've got, speaking of 2B, I mean, I think he's a next cab longer term for the side. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. then a lot of talk about Scott Bowling at the moment as well. He's bowling really well. Yep. He's a guy who would just do an incredible job on a yep. flat wicket. Yep. I know the MCG is meant to be decent mm. now, mm. but... Uh, you know, Jackson Bird got that back-breaking job yeah. a couple of years ago. He yeah, go yeah. go and break your back on this yeah, and save yeah. one of the quicks. I mean, yeah. bowl, bowling on a flat wicket would do an incredible job as well. If is that's he what, quick enough? I've never, what, I've never yeah, seen he's, a, he's, he's up there, yeah. Okay. He's up there And there's, there's Nisa as well, of course. Nisa has just waited and waited and been very patient. And I wouldn't be surprised funny, if Langer it? wanted to reward him as well. But, mm. uh, it's yeah, I mean, there's no shortage of quicks, basically. I think, I think they're okay on that front. Yeah. Uh, and then who else have they got here? He goes for this ones v twos game. Yeah. Um, Do you know yeah. when that is? Uh no. Or where could, it is? N- nope. <laughs> yeah, someone else does. Sorry, I, 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 I don't know either. Sorry, I threw uh, a little bus there. But I mean, Sean Abbott as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Nick Nick Madison's going to play in that game. It looks like the the only thing they need to sort out now is who's going to bat five, which seems to be between a three way race between Madison, Kawaja, and Travis Head. I, I wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they just went with the convention and, and went with Head. You know, uh, they want they see him as a longer term player. I think mm. a lot of people still think that there's a career there for Travis Head, and I wouldn't be surprised if they went with him there. Mate, but do you know? Do you know what? I can I can see it. I can so see it with Travis yeah. Head. You know, like he's got all the tools. He's already had some some undulations in his pretty. Oh, he's played a lot of tests, but he was like he captain an ODI game for yeah. Australia. He was he was at least ODI vice captain for a period of time. People get so and then frustrated. And he fell out him. of that. And then he's, ne- he's never been the sort of T20 
in the T20 setup, but like he's been the guy for Australia batting at five yeah. for ages, and it's just they want it and they need he it. He scored those hundred against New Zealand in that series yeah. when Australia won three nil, but then you know it's so hard to score runs in England, but he didn't do it there. And Wade scored two hundreds in that series, and then Wade's obviously way down the list now, but. You know, and then there's a sort of Kawaja who's 34, 35, and it's like, okay, he, he might have like two years left, whereas Travis Head's got the age advantage there. Madison, yeah. I think, is 30. 29, I think. Okay. Yeah, 20. So he's got a bit more time on his side as well. You know, he's a yeah. potential guy, but he's another guy that they like. But, you know, I, I guess what I'm, all I'm saying is I can see it with Head, and I can see the potential of what that leads to because he's captain South Australia. He captained when he was like 21, didn't he? He captained super young. So he can be a guy who's a future captain as well for Australia, but he needs to call the runs first, and he just hasn't done it. Would you use an Ashes series to continue the development of a player, or do you need finished articles? Can Australia carry a develop uh, uh, someone who you're still pushing along? I mean, th- they well, actually really, you know, the best result for Australia would be to get Travis Head in this series yeah. and for him to succeed, because yeah. I think there are worries about the Australian batting unit post Smith and Warner. Smith's got a few years left. Warner's 35. Yeah. But after that, there's a bit of a drop-off. You've got Marnus. You've got Cameron Green coming through. Will Bukowski, we're unsure. Yeah. You know, they'd love Travis Head to come and shore up that middle order as well. But And, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did go with him. I think pound for pound right now, if you're if it's just gun to your head, who's going to score the most runs in this series? Kawaj has got the hot hand and he's the best bat. And it looks, So I'd probably pick him, to be honest. He'd probably score more runs, more runs than Marcus Harris as well. Yeah, at the top, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's interesting with Warner. Would Warner play? Would he go to England in two years' time? I mean, it's jumping so far ahead, but, isn't it? But but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Do you use a home Ashes series to future proof, <laughs> Mate, or it's is, funny. It, is it a team for now? Because then you start talking about Mitch Mark. There's all sorts of guys who are like, you know, well, who, who's the future selection? Mate, four, for four years ago, last time the Ashes were here, so long ago. You think about yeah. what that team was. Bancroft opened the batting just before going to South Africa. Mitch Marsh is in the team. Shaw Marsh is in the team, and like. Mm. Mitch Marsh scores 183 in Perth against yeah. England. Then he scores 100 at the SCG. Mate, he, he might not be that far away. I, mean, I think he's I think Bailey he's was very uh, he was very careful with his comments about that. He just when we asked him, he was just saying, he was just saying, "I'm glad to see that he's going well." You yeah. know, I think it's gonna be good yeah. for him over the next few years. But he he didn't want to put too much weight on it right now. It'd be funny if he just goes nah. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening, Mitch, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you haven't played enough first class cricket. Very different yeah. thing. It's Who? La Nina, Anderson. Yeah. It's a it's a whole thing. Mitch Marsh? No, yeah. no, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm excited for whoever they pick at five. To be honest, uh, big one for Cam Green as well this summer. I mean, he's just yeah. he's just a lock. Cam Green's a lock. Yeah, and you're not sure. It's funny because. He actually could play lock for rugby, but um, <laughs> <laughs> could do anything. The old lock, like number eight, or actually in the second row. He's probably yeah. second row, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, line out. He could shit. be a big number eight. He could do anything. Mm. Oh, Banking, finance, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daddy yeah. daycare. Yeah, a bit of Sydney stuff. Um, but yeah, it's funny because like Australia hasn't played a test since the Gabba, where it was back in January, but like he's just, so I've hardly seen him, hardly seen him play. I guess there's some white ball stuff and he's back in the shield and he's, he's done okay. He's seen some great cricket highlights of him hitting sixes against 12-year-olds, but um. Yeah, he needs a hundred. He needs a hundred. And, and when, we, when we win tournaments like this, we can start being very greedy and demanding of our players again. Yeah. I mean, that's just you must the be flint off. Where's you, get a hundred in the first four rings of this series? Yeah, I'm going to start talking about your position in yeah. the side. Be flint off, but have way better numbers than him. <laughs> like way better, taller, faster, yep. better numbers. Yep. Do it all over the world. Yep. Come on our show, be funny, <laughs> yeah, be charismatic, be charismatic. Kind of go with it a bit. Like give, give us a whole piece of yourself yeah, that right. can relate to, yeah. but also be a bit of a robotic yeah. uh, kind of superstar that's as right. well, yeah. who's a cut above everybody. Sort else. Sort of laugh, laugh with yourself, laugh about yourself, but sort of give a bit, but don't yeah. give too much. Yeah. Like just could be a little bit distant. That's right. Yeah, earn yeah. heaps of money in the IPL or whatever, but don't uh, like like walk with kings, not lose a common touch sort of thing. But if you see us, like know our names. But also, yeah. It's quite a few boxes. Freak, there. Yeah. Oh, you're a captaincy thing as well, so you're good with other players <laughs> yeah, also. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. keep yourself out of trouble as well. Get yeah. a nice watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Uh, uh, That's Chris Green. Um, <laughs> hey, he goes, you see that the, somehow, for some reason, the, yeah. we didn't talk about this on the agenda, just picked it up, but the, uh, the, the Perth test is still firming. What the fuck's going on with this, <laughs> mate? What was going on? Mate, there's so, a 4-HS going on. Make any so, sense. I've got a, okay, I'll just read this out. Read it out. I've got a theory. Uh, Perth's def- desperation to host the fifth test could extend to an extraordinary proposal to immediately change the ball whenever it's hit oh, for yeah, six. Oh, yeah, this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Western, <laughs> mate, what the Western fuck Australia is, is confident the test will be officially signed off on as early as next week. 
which is this week, under a revamped five-day quarantine proposal allowing players from England and Australia to train and play during that time frame. However, a key part of the proposal would dictate that players would not be able to have any contact with fans, which according to reports in the West Australian newspaper means balls into the crowd for six may have to be replaced. A couple of like days after this, they interviewed Sock about uh, the BBL. So I don't want to go over there. So I have to go over there. I have to get in a hotel. Mark McGowan doesn't like us. We don't like him. You know, fair play to WA people, but I don't want to go. I, like, this is so funny. He goes like, uh, mm. it, uh, it's like, wouldn't the England players just kick off about this and say, fuck mate, this? Mate, or imagine, or Australia. Mate, imagine if it's, let's say it's 3-1. Let's say yeah. it's 3-0. Let's say yeah, it's 4-0. Yeah. It, it ain't going to be 2-2. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> Like, they've had Not enough. Not anymore. Not after last night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure. Carry the momentum in, mm, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, are they going to be up for a fucking... Like, they've been all over the world. You can't, you can't exaggerate how much cricket and how much bubbling they've had this year. They come to Australia. It's fucked here for them. They hate mm. it. it. They're tired. Long Ashes series, the press, mm. all that stuff. Wear coats. Wear coats. Do you want to go to Perth and get bounced out for four days? Mm. And stay on the same level of your hotel and... Yeah. and Change balls every time he gets hit for six, or some weird fucking Mate, other country shit. I don't understand. And also, like, I mean, McGowan got in just in political sense. Like, he was voted in because of his like part of the reason I think was what I've read anyway is that he was so strict with like the you know the and with like the quarantines and that kind of shit. And like, so that's what his his population wants. I, I, I want to say but they the also ball, want a game of cricket. I want to say the ball carry. Like don't, like oh yeah, I, it's going to go through the I, chest. I'm weighing this up against the way the ball carries. I want it through the chest. The heel of the light. Yeah. And the sound of the crowd and just people's arms are bigger and thicker in, in WA. I want to see that. Mate. As a fifth test, I'd like it a, to be 4-0 yeah. and I'll see some thick tanned arms. Mate, I want I want desperation in the eyes where it's 4-0 leaving yeah. Sydney and they go to, where, where's next? Oh, I, want a, I, want a tribute, I want a tribute leg spinner picked yeah, yeah, yeah. By England. He like, doesn't really... Like Liam Livingston plays. Exactly. Yeah, Liam Livingston some, plays, fly him over, bowl leg spin. A bit of a novelty thing for yeah, the English yeah. people to talk about. Yeah. I, w- I want all of that, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to make sense because you've got to basically tunnel your way there like Steve McQueen and, and not see anybody. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make... Like, I don't get it. But I don't get it either. It must be. This is his, A theory of mine is that like... It seems... I have no idea about any of this sort of stuff, so I'm speaking in high... Um, yeah, go for high it. High themes. Yeah, yeah just commit, go for commit. it. Sorry, it's not me yeah. who listen. Yeah. Is... Um, like with the England India stuff, there was a few. Uh, like when when India went home, there was a few. There was a little bit of posturing straight after the decision because there were insurance or legal right. issues. Yeah. Uh, so at, at play, so I wonder if every party needs to represent that. Oh, I see. That they want the oh, game to be on because so whomever cuts it. Right. Lose doesn't it, doesn't it. lose got whatever it. they stand to lose oh, it's or a some fun, shit. Fun little game. Yeah, and I'll just throw that out there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With no, <laughs> no, no. I, I just wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, whether that's what's going on because yeah. we just everyone I feel like is just hearing these uh, reports and people are going, no, it's on. And Christina Matthews, who did great work at my cricket club, Balmain, many many years ago, oh, or yeah, whatever, right, great yeah, administrator. Yeah, he's just like, oh, good luck, Tassie. You know, Tassie's written saying, yeah. well, we'll do it. Waste of waste of ink or something. Oh, some yeah. shit. Yeah, no, yeah. We, we we've got the test and. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, but How? you've got it, but you've got to quarantine for fourteen days, and you don't yeah. want anyone to come. So why do you want the something? Gap, the gap between when the <laughs> Sydney test will finish and when the next is like four days. Yeah. So how do? Who's pulling the pin here? <laughs> like, who's just gonna? How gonna re- pull India it? were involved. India doing something. Well, can is India the, get is involved? Is it, is it the IPL. Like again, I want it through the chest. But, mate, but if McGowan's I, like, you've got to quarantine fourteen mate, days. How's it work? There's fucking, only a couple days. I love Perth as a place. The yeah. times we've been there, awesome. Yeah. I love the, the lifestyle. I love flying over the desert. It makes me feel yeah, safe. It feels fucking good. I like watching on TV. The Wacker. Yeah. What a great ground. Opposite Stadium. Great ground. Always all play, of it. All of it's well good. There. Looks hot. We win. It feels good. I love the I people. It's like, all good. But like, I don't get it. What are we paws missing? Stand up at the carry of the ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, paws stand up. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I'm getting rock hard off something else. It's, yeah, sure. Off something yeah, else. Off cool. something else. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> the nets at the back. <laughs> all the, the entire aesthetic. Joel Paris. Yeah. The whole aesthetic of, of Perth and cricket in Perth and WA yeah. is about as good as it gets. Mm. It, now that the gab has actually fallen over, I probably turn my attention to Perth. Same. Like that's the safer thing. Same. It's like, well, what yeah. you, nobody can do anything to us in Perth. No, unless you're South Africa. I just don't want people to be unhappy. It's like, but why, why do you have to like – Yeah. I don't know. I saw there's some fourth wave shit going on in Europe though, so uh, I don't okay. know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so four tests, just be four tests. I guess so. England will kick off. Um, okay, should we? Is there anything else to talk? I was talking about Sheffield Shield, which sort of rolls into this a bit as well. I mean, Kawhi just scored runs in a game where um, they were rolled. I think he got seventy. The team was bowled out for like one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty, or something. It was doing all sorts. He's yeah, he did a good seventy. Yeah, uh, Josh Philippe, Ryan's brother, got a hundred. Yeah. Um, Pattinson got a one match ban, yeah. and uh, for throwing the ball back at Dan Hughes. Yeah, that was a little bit harsh. And he thought so as well because he posted something on Instagram. Yeah, that was that? funny. Well, that was funny. Uh, I thought he was kind of right. Like, yeah. I mean, can't both things be true? It's like, yeah, don't do not do that. But at the same time, like, was it that bad? Like, I felt like it was uh, – It's it had the, the tone to me of like Cricket Australia uh, with the best of intentions uh, attempting to make an example of somebody because our behaviour is like – you know, and the <clears> – <throat> I guess – our bad behaviour is basically the the bedrock of poor Australian cricket culture, and so yeah, anytime a big a, a big player looks to be behaving in a kind of intimidatory or borderline violent way, that they yeah. need to like come down twice as hard. Except that, like, I hate to say, like, oh, if you've played the game thing, but yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. just th- that particular incident, like he he sort of throws it at him just a little bit off balance. It is a bit at him. Like, it's not fast enough. Like, Hughes actually is through the shot trying to stop it. He just misses it. And it just happens. Like, it, it injures him. It hits him in the ankle. Mm. And, like, a Pattinson apologised. Apparently, like, went off. <laughs> Apparently, he was giving it to him afterwards as well. But that's sort of James Pattinson. Yeah. I, like, and, and then Pattinson highlighted times when players have thrown, like, and Manus, Manus especially, it, yeah. you know, he's throwing the ball. Like, tell us a carry on and shield, mate. Exactly. Seen a There's lot a, from Manus and a lot from Steve Smith in recent yeah, years. I just thought right. it was between players. And just the way, like, you know, we'll get an email alerts going like, uh, you, you know, a statement from Cricket Australia on James Pattinson's behaviour. It's like, uh, you know, as someone who played only just grade cricket, like, yeah, yeah. How many I, I felt so. You played? <laughs> I just yeah. felt sorry for him. It's like he's fucking uh, bowled his ring off like all day. He's fired up. He doesn't throw it hard. It's not at his head. It's and low. If that, if that was genuinely, if that was a first grade game that happened and a bloke got a game for that, you'd be like, pretty just, harsh. Just, That's uh, pretty harsh. It was. It was. They sort of embarrassed him a little bit about it as well. Like that was the clip. That just ran all over social media so that everyone could like sort of have that you know weigh in with their judgment about it, uh, you know. Yeah, it would have been good if there were more clips of his bowling, to be honest. But I, yeah. I, that's probably not the point. But I just thought, anyway, the next game they played was a uh, one day at the MCG. They got washed out, so he hasn't really missed a game. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, so that was the game that yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Oh well, well done. Um, and then Manus bowled Cam Green by shouldering arms. That that bodes well. <laughs> You know, just I really wanted Kawaja back in the side, but like just letting Manus Plybushain bowl medium. I know he bowls with his great club and stuff, but like yeah, just yeah. he should be bowling his leggies. Yeah. His leggies are good. good. Yeah. He's a bit like, I feel like when Manus is bowling medium pace in shield cricket, he's essentially, and I suppose I respect it, but he's appropriating what we all like feeling in backyard cricket of bowling wheels into shield cricket. Yeah. Kind of brings it down. But then again, I guess he bowls out flint off. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's got bigger, better leggies, Liam Livingston or Manus? I think Marnus's leggies are good. I think uh, Livingston's leggies are pretty good as well. Yeah. Like international red legs. Red ball leg. Oh, I'm, oh, yeah, they're different skills. Getting the red ball. They're different skills. Don't talk to me. Oh, I'm not getting out of bed unless we're talking about <laughs> red ball. <laughs> not going to get out of bed. I'll have a look at a Nash's yeah. test. <laughs> Watch three games a year. Got some strong views though. Uh, anything else, Pez, to talk about? No. Nah. Um, okay, cool. Uh, let's get into hashtag RCDC. Uh, but before we do... Um, we will not be will not be in your ears next week. Um, <laughs> I feel like we we spoke to our patrons last week and just said we're taking a couple of weeks off. It's it's not really um time off necessarily. We've got some other commitments. We've got a big summer ahead, which is exciting. It's obviously uh, it wasn't that long ago where the conversation pez around the cricket was going to be about whether the thing was either going to be played. So it's exciting that. Obviously, the English players, are, some of them anyway, are already here. Um, that Australia's won a trophy, that's good as well. But the fact that there's cricket going to be played, and I think there's going to be fans. I know Dan Andrews, the Premier of Victoria, is talking about having 80,000 people for Boxing Day. We'll see what happens. Because um, obviously, sometimes if someone sneezes, then we don't even play the games. But um, that's just the nature of it. But uh, but yeah, we won't be doing the show next week. Uh, we've got some other stuff to record with our network show. Um, but, uh, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks, the week before... The week commencing 29th of November. Okay. We're back. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, 
Uh, thanks for everyone who's supported us and, and the patrons especially, patreon.com forward slash great cricketer who's got all of our audio for uh, the World Cup, the IPL, the other test series that have gone on. It's exciting that Australia are going to play some red ball cricket again. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but uh, it's uh, in in some ways it feels like this is the end of some cycle and the new cycle is about to be. It feels like the end of the northern summer somehow, even though it finished a while ago. It's now autumn there. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I know a lot of people, well, I think for the most part, people have been out of lockdown uh, around the world. I know we have been for now about two weeks, which has been wonderful. But um, it's been a very, uh, I'm spitballing here, but uh, this is something I want to say. It's um, It's been a privilege to be able to talk to people during lockdown for the last, well, I suppose it's been two years. It's been a pretty tough two years for a lot of people. And for me personally, I just want to thank everyone who's been a patron or watched the YouTube show or retweeted something or even downloaded this every week. It's been uh, very... It's a, it's a privilege to talk to these this amount of people every week. So um, so yeah, five nil. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're getting sincere for a second, are you? Well, okay, that's a weakness. Uh, that's that's well, quite a weakness. Was revealed. That. Okay, Alistair Woolgar. Boys, on the topic of people giving kid away, you've triggered a memory of mine and Rudy's that occurred during last year's club prizing giving. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard from uh, from Woolly and Rudy before. Uh, anyway, Karori Cricket Club in Wellington was hosting an event in which all teams from first grade to park shit had a captain's <laughs> speech followed by prizes for MVP and team man. Allow me to, to introduce our team man, Scott, a stocky outswinger, massive forearms and an absolute heart of gold. He has mixed the confidence of Nugsy and the bullshit stories of Jay from the Inbetweeners. He also looks exactly like the late pro wrestler Chris Benoit, although Scott seems to like his family more than Chris. Midway through our fifth beers, second beers and first shandies, Scott started his usual ramblings. I can get Panhead Brewery to sponsor us next year, Panhead being a very popular beer in NZ. My mate who used to play first class is definitely is definitely to play as a ring-in next season. I bought a whole bunch of kit from Michael Papp's Brother the other day. Some of it was banned by the ICC. Did you, mate? Did you? <laughs> sure did. One of the bats was too big for David Warner to use in the IPL. It's in my car right now. Bollocks. Show us them. Sure enough, after our eighth beer, fourth, we ventured to a nearby street, dimly lit with a sense of danger lurking nearby, just to see this illegal gear in the back of the Benoit mobile. A grey Nick's kit bag full of black market sticks. <laughs> Woodworm, Mongoose, Duncan Fernley, they were all there. Rudy and I grew lightheaded as, as we inhaled the fresh scent of linseed oil on English Willow. We grew suspicious as we heard a rustle in the trees nearby, <laughs> but it was nothing. Probably just a lost score or someone gave us a Friday night dogging. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bad boy I was telling you about. Scott then pulled out the biggest railway sleeper I've ever seen, complete with some grey nickels decals I'd never heard of. What? <laughs> This is one tear down from the stuff some Indian fellow from Chennai went to prison home detention for, thinking thinking of using it next season. We're still waiting for that beer sponsor and we wait with intrigue for this season to see how this secret illegal gear goes. Oh, crap. I shouldn't have said it was a secret. Oh, crap. I definitely should have said it was illegal. Ah, it's only T20. Wooly and Rudy. Um, it's a, what, two guys write this? Is this a joint operation or has he got... a uh no, no, it was, yeah, joint just, operation. Uh, um, I'll tell you what, like, most of the questions that come in I, I take as invitations to strike down, but I'm actually genuinely intrigued about about this scene, you know, because, like, yeah, yeah. normally if you, the team man that Woolly and Rudy, whichever one, is um, describing is, like, is full of shit or, like, yeah. it just cannot deliver what right. they're talking about. But it sounds like this, this guy, this team man, took them around the corner, dimly lit street, the full scene, yeah, yeah. and, like, opened up all this illegal kit. Like, I mean, mm. I don't know about you, illegal cricket equipment wasn't ever a topic of discussion <laughs> while we played. Not I just cricket didn't... equipment. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but so like, I, I'm just, yeah, now I want to start talking about like how illegal can, cr can like, cricket equipment so be bat, to assist you. A bat has to be like the width of the thing. But who's ever going to find out, you know? Like if you if you had a bat just a little bit wider, is anyone going to say anything? Depends how silly you can get it. Yeah, exactly. Like what's the how silly could you get it? Because what's the width of a bat like? Yeah. Like no one real. I mean, people it's like some people will know, but no one like officially knows. You just sort of look at it. It's just like yeah, yeah. 
But if 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 it was like a centimeter, then you wouldn't notice. If it's like nudging into the inches, if it's an inch thicker, yeah. like an inch wider, I reckon you might have a look. You might notice something. It's funny, like. We have a lot of ball tampering out there. Why yeah, not yeah. bat tampering? Why not bat tampering? Because because I, I think I feel like when we talk about illegal bats, it's all about what the bat's made of, or like there's something, yeah, some yeah, yeah. screw inside yeah, it, or yeah. something it's like that. Yeah. yeah, or some shit, yeah. some something, some. I do recognise the team guy, the team man though, like someone at your club who is their identity is in accessing like top of the line like kit, which is a bit a bit off market in the sense like I can get you a great deal on this bat. Yeah, and it's just from like Rebel Sport, but it's two toned. You see, I, I just, like I just find it hard. Sorry, he goes like to conceive of how good a bat can be. Like, like I'm just trying imagining holding yeah. a piece of wood where you you apply force to the ball yeah. and Wonder you get bat. and you yeah and you get an incongruous reaction from it. Like you like I mean, it, it almost seems to fly in the face of science. Yeah. You know, you like know the, it hits um, wood. Yeah, you know, you know the fielding bats which had foam on them. Yes. Yeah, like yeah, the orange like, bat. Yeah, yeah like and that. it flies a bit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they tried that with like mongoose tried that, didn't they? Where they have like the the elongated handle and the short blade, which is supposed to give you more power. Yeah. Because of the did the that weight, get outlawed? Or? It wasn't outlawed. No, no, it was just, it was, just it was a legit. shit bat. It was legit. But that was the idea of like manipulating bat technology to yeah. um, for advantageous uh, exploits of batters. I don't know if it ever worked. I feel there there are certain characters in cricket clubs who would be able to pick out a bat being too wide. Like I, just because it's the first guy in my head, but like the I feel like the late Dean Jones yeah. would have been quite good at seeing a bat going. That bat's not regulation size. Yeah, because you know I mean? it takes it takes a level of nuffiness. Yes, to like re- be like like I'm gonna pick up this bat and just yeah. have a look at it like the next yeah. time I look at a bat, it's like is that. Ooh, yeah, what are we looking at here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, I feel like all bats are illegal now, in a way. I know that's an old fogey thing to say. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. all they're all big, thick boys that have a sort of uh, yeah. There's a disproportionate response when you swing it, and it's yeah, and it's only really bats which have that advantage. Like no one's got like gloves, which are oh, those those gloves are a bit fucking bit how you going? Exactly. <laughs> legal gloves. Yeah, <laughs> you punch it for four. <laughs> I, I d- man, yeah. I feel like people again showing age. Like I, I do feel like. Guys swing bats differently now to the way they Confidence, used to definitely. because of, but the way the ball behaves off the bat, you yep. actually you can swing it, you can swing Mate, the bat more slowly and get more from it. I think this is also an, uh, a thing of the <laughs> evolution of helmets, but like you watch how like Ian Chappell tells people to like play a hook shot, for instance, get inside it and then like help it on its way kind of thing. No, blokes just stand there on the front foot basically and trying to hit it in front of square. Exactly. And it's because of the confidence of the, the thickness of the will and also if I get hit in the head for the most part, like you're going to be okay. You know what I yeah. mean? Whereas like in those days, it's kind of, it's just a different way to play the game. But yeah. like that, that, that uh, sort of, that technical coaching of that to play that specific shot is completely different because of, of what the bat that he was using. He's just batting in a cap, you know? I was just trying to think of what kind of, Illegal gear could assist you. Like I know, um, yeah. like spin- spinners used to use a certain um, peptide. Uh, there, there was a there was a little ointment that you could get from the chemist that like made your fingers sticky, so the so the ball would like stick onto your fingers a little bit more. You just spend a little bit longer on the ball. So it was a green thing. You used to dip your finger in it. Uh, they also used to tell you to piss on your finger, but like you say say like in the there used to be rumors like in the seventies and the eighties like the Canterbury Bulldogs in rugby league like they had um. They had like metal inside their shoulder pads and shit. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, I'm just not sure if you could do something like that in cricket. Obviously, you can with a ball. You can make it behave in certain ways. But what can you do? Like in, with a bat, yeah. the ball's coming at you. Like, what can you do to give yourself an advantage? I don't really know. I would imagine that the, with the stickiness of the finger thing. Yeah, that thing. Like you can also go like as a spinner, you can also drag it down because it gets stuck in your hand. Yeah, I used to, I used to have it. I don't think it was illegal. Like, um, um. and it, it was like a green. Um, kind of ointment and it would it would actually uh-huh. leave green marks on your finger but it was much better than like the one of the worst things is like afternoon like afternoon tea sun's beating down you got to put sunscreen on yeah you get the sunscreen all over your face and then you can't really grip the ball yeah and then you worry about your mitts and mm. anyway well didn't really know where to go with that it was just, it just ended up becoming a really serious chat about yeah. cricket kit yeah we've got we, we do have time yeah uh, for another one so uh linda Wu writes in he goes, dear TGC, that's a nice intro. I am due my first child in January and my partner is coming to terms with not going to winter nets. 
and perhaps <laughs> definitely not playing both Saturday and Sunday from April to September in 2022, which made me remember my first experience of watching a village game as the only spectator. Brackets not uncommon over the years to be sole spectator. Being the sole spectators meant I always got attention from teammates, etc. Normally an older chap mansplaining the concept of an over to me <laughs> without being promoted. <laughs> But on one occasion, I wasn't quite prepared for the small talk, dot, dot, dot. I'm sat with this older chap who was telling me he plays on the team with his son-in-law, chatting all about their wedding, etc., etc., and then explains that his daughter, wife of son-in-law currently batting, is about my size, probably a bit slimmer, Fucking hell. but with massive boobs, <laughs> such that wedding dress shopping was problematic and he paid for a handmade dress to fit her exceptional figure of tiny waist and double Ds. I wasn't prepared for this U-turn in small talk, and years later, I'm not sure if I feel <laughs> it was sweet that this chap was so involved in his daughter's wedding and probably paid a fortune for her wedding dress, or if it was too much information and uh, we should have stuck to that safe subject of how much the club's new roller will cost, <laughs> which is better. I can only imagine the dad issues playing out between son-in-law and father-in-law on the same side. Currently watching England versus Sri Lanka and at 35 for three, not quite as enjoyable as the Aussie game. I will never tire of hoping Justin Langer is somewhere in the world putting rubbish back into a waste bin. <laughs> Linda. Uh, Linda, congratulations on your impending first child in January. That's very exciting. Or whatever the fuck you're supposed to say. I don't really, you don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most remarkable and unremarkable thing you'll ever do. Yeah. You know? I mean, we've all been born. Yeah, a lot of people have kids, Linda. Fuck. Self-indulgent much? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But also congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, yeah, of course. And wishing yes. you well. Yeah. Five nil. Um uh that's that is remarkably uncomfortable. Like what's the is this some Gen X shit? Like just talking to another woman of like, oh, this will be a shared experience. It's like my it's my a, daughter a, is thing, of man. ample bosom. It's a thing. And tiny waist. You must be able to relate to this story. Yeah, it's a thing like uh I'm sure it's actually a psychological phenomenon of um of parents who are a little too obsessed with the sexual prowess of their progeny uh, and and kind of... Um, Even father-daughter? Well, look at Paul Scholes. <laughs> seen any of that? <laughs> the, the toe-eating stuff. Toe-nail eating. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It's... it's mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hell, hell of a player. I, I, I remember... I'm not going to name any names here, but, like, I've heard... I've heard... Mothers speak about their sons with. Uh, I heard one mother describe their son as a stallion. Oh right. Um, and and spoke with the level of pride about the um, right. sexual success. Let's say uh, to put it mildly, yeah. it must be a. I think it's a thing. I mean, we've heard Donald Trump talk about his daughter in in oh, terms yeah, that are yeah. a little bit really? like really okay, how you going? Well, yeah. Not sure if that's, that's I'd be he dating that's her healthy. if she wasn't my daughter. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a it's a phenomenon. I you guess know? so. Yeah, it's just guess it, so. It's just blokes um, just understanding everything. Now I can understand if that was Hazelwood's mum because I mean, what a what a horse that is. <laughs> <laughs> what's the What's the least appropriate thing I could say to sign up the show? Know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, uh, it, it, oh, Josh Hazel is absolutely stunning. Psycho <laughs> psychologists out there who can let—I'm sure this is a phenomenon. It ha it has to be, and uh, I'm I'm sorry, Linda, that you had to experience that. But thank God you're not in that family, huh? Well, yeah, I suppose so. Just the uncomfortable nature, anyway, of just being the sole person at a creek ground, then like someone coming up to you—you know—if you're sitting yeah, on your I own, I thought like, she was going to say something else. You know, if you're like at a bus, <laughs> it's back to that dogging thing from the previous yeah. story with Willie, uh, Willie and Rudy. Um, you know that phenomenon with like sitting at a bus stop or like you're sitting on your own at the cafe or something and someone comes up to you and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. And it's someone you know as well. <laughs> like it's one of your best mates. I, I, oh, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't genuinely know of a phenomenon where I'm sitting at a bus stop and some. You mean like someone just wants to talk to me? Yeah, someone just oh, comes okay. up. Yeah. Or you're sitting on a plane and yeah. someone wants to have a chat. Yeah, I, I do, yeah. I do, I do. I even get out of the gym. I sometimes put headphones on but no music playing. Someone comes up and wants to have a chat. Really? Yeah. At the yeah. gym? Yep. What do you reckon that's about? Hard to say. Yeah. Hard to say. Do you think it's because you're looking good? I don't think so. I remember when I, when I was 18 and there, there was something approaching a rig and I was in the gym. Mm -hmm. 
I still think about this at Sydney University gym. A, a woman came up to me and wanted to talk to me, but she said, uh, she she said that my technique for uh, the bicep curl was wrong. Wow! And uh, that- I, I I was I was suitably like turned off as it, I was like, well, this is this is a complete offering. There's that is a complete offering. Yeah, yeah. But why is she talking to me? Like, what is that? Are uh, she nagging you? Is that was that what it was? I didn't. Uh, know. Yeah. I didn't understand. I was. Eight. I might have even been seventeen. I'll need to see some footage. Yeah, it is. Sorry, <laughs> you got would have been an, it would have been a three flip phone. At the time. <laughs> three, yeah, those were yeah. the days. Yeah, Australian team sponsored by them. Orange, yeah, they were quick. Warren was yeah. bowling. Yeah. yeah, Brett Lee, Brett Lee, Brett yeah, Lee's Ponting's done. batting. Yeah. Gabba. Oh, yeah. I always thought the orange sponsor actually looked very wrong at the time. Orange on the whites looked wrong, but they were. That was like oh two oh three, yep. and that was just, that, had black gloves. That was the nastiest, most dominant Austra- iteration of the Australian team because it was late Steve War. Oh yeah, it's like, that, but there was like Travelex was the away sponsor. Like ninety nine two thousand was like the the apex of what they were doing. Yep. Oh two was like a lag on the apex, so yeah. they were still unbelievably good and pummeling everybody in cricket was boring, but, but they were but probably a bit. but they were bored, yeah. and angry, and yep. just you know. Wanting yeah. just trying to make things happen. <laughs> yeah, more victims. That was like, oh, let's select Brett Lee because we just want to see some yeah. pace. And, <laughs> you know, what I mean? some new sex. Let's yeah, have a look so, at so yeah. Have a look at him. Yeah, have a look at it. Has a piece on it. Mm. All right, good bowler. Hey, Australia just won the World Cup this morning. What an achievement! Who saw that coming? Not us. Not anyone. Perhaps who cares? Australia won. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks uh, for a return of the great cricketer. Uh, and uh, anything else to say? It's like one week off. All the best. <laughs> All the best. All right. See you guys for the beginning of the ashes, the southern summer. I'm fucking excited for it. See you in a bit.